Okay, so I want to go over uh, information technology ethics. So start off with a little chat about ethics and then uh, move more over towards technology. So, um, okay, so a study, uh, what, what is ethics? A study of moral choices made by people. What are morals? Conforming to accepted ideas of right and wrong. So do this because it's right, don't do that because it's wrong. So who's defining this? So uh, is topless bathing acceptable? Depends on who you talk to, right? Okay. Uh, how uh, do ethics develop? Okay. Ethics can develop. Uh, I just want to say one thing. I didn't create these slides. These are slides given by the company that provides our textbooks. So, so uh, not necessarily saying they're 100% right or partly wrong or anything like that. So. So uh, anyway, so ethics are developed by family, uh, cultural bias, religious affiliation, and life experiences. So you're the person in the middle, and we have, uh, you know, your family, your religion, your teachers, uh, experiences when you go out of life, all affect what you consider ethical behavior. Um, okay, so this is a chart. We'll go through each of these, you know, briefly, but it's, uh, you know, does everyone have the same uh, ethical system? And if the answer is no, everyone has different uh, theories about what is ethical, and we all try to behave in an ethical way, especially when using computer systems and computer networks. We all have kind of different, uh, uh, different definitions of what is and what is not ethical. So it's relativism, uh, divine command theory, utilitarianism, virtual ethics, okay, and then duty-based ethics. So uh, relativism uh, is the, there's, there is no universal moral truth. Uh, it's dictated by cultural tastes and customs. Divine command theory is conforming to God's law, and if you follow God's law, you're doing good, and if you don't, you're doing bad. Um, although God sets the standards, um, okay, so an example would be like the Ten Commandments. Okay, okay. so maybe you know what the Ten Commandments are, maybe you don't. Okay. All right, um, okay, so it's your choice. Uh, you only have one pill, and you can save one life. Okay, do you save your young child's life, or do you save a brilliant scientist's life? So this falls into the category that when you get on an airplane, they would say, in case of an emergency, uh, first put the oxygen mask on your face before helping your child, right? And the idea is, if, you're, if you go to help your child, and you're struggling with your child, and you faint, and you can't get the mask on your child, then the both of you will faint, and both of you will die. But if you secure yours first, you could then be in a position to help your child out. So the question is, yeah, would you would you give the uh, would you give the life saving pill to your child or to the scientist who may save many many people? Is it what's in your best interest versus what's in the greater good of society? Is the the question that the, I believe they're posing here? Okay, so utilitarianism is how much utility, how much benefit do you get from the decision you've made? So is the greater happiness better, the greater happiness of society, or is individual happiness? Uh, utilitarianism is not uh, as important. So, uh, so an example would be like using weapons of mass destruction ends war sooner and therefore saves lives otherwise would have been destroyed had the fight kept going, going that kind of argument. Uh, virtue ethics, uh, morals are internal. Okay. Uh, okay. So, like I say, this is these are you know topics on on dealing with ethics uh, in general, and we want to kind of focus more on uh, computers. But the law is getting involved in the use of computers, the ethical and moral uh, and legal use of computers. So, laws are formal; they're written standards designed to apply to everybody and enforced by the government agency or the FBI the police. Ethics <clears throat> is needed to provide a general set of unwritten guidelines 
that really are not being forced, we're just, we as a society, we want to everybody, have everybody behave ethically when it comes to uh, using a computer, so. Um, do your ethics change when you go to work? You know, is stealing wrong, is, but when you get to work, it becomes okay, does that happen? Can you, can you take a big chunk of printer paper home with you? Well, the company has plenty of it. I don't have any at home. I'm using some of it to do some work, so it's kind of work-related, but sometimes not work-related. So, you know, questions like that come up. Um, so employers expect their employees to follow an uh, ethics and a code of conduct, a way that uh, you must behave. And, and some uh, employers will actually give you a booklet, the code of conduct, read this, uh, you need to follow this. And they have whistleblower policies, uh, so if you see another um, employee doing something unethical or illegal, you can tell uh, your company about it. Uh, sometimes they, uh, if you get paid cash at a job and you're also collecting unemployment, that would be work-related, unethical, and even unlawful behavior. Um, and then doing things outside of work, going on uh, Facebook and putting down comments about your company negative comments about your company, which will actually cause people to not want to work there and then therefore hurt the company. You could be behaving unethically in that sense. Okay, so tech, no, I'm sorry, now we're starting to move into the technology part. So technology is moving faster than rules can be even, you know, written and formulated and enforced. So in technology, ethics becomes very important because a lot of times we don't have laws to follow. So use of technology is often left up to the individual. Ethical considerations are very, very real, rarely clear cut. So technology and ethics, how one affects the other. Uh, we have social justice, intellectual property, privacy, property rights, electronic information access, and computer abuse. Okay, and I think we go through each of these, okay. So social, social justice, for example, uh, companies like Google uh, are writing software to have a car drive by itself without a driver. And that's great. So they'll follow the law if the car drives up to a stop sign, it stops. And if no car's coming the other way, then it can proceed. But let's say, for example, um, if, if the car is driving over a hill, and a school bus is stopped, and it can't break in time, you're writing software, what do you do? If it's too late, do you slam on the brakes? You could actually hit a kid, as opposed to uh, driving, driving through before the kid runs across the street. So the question is, what do you do in some of these uh, uh, ethical or unethical, you know, ethical or unethical situations? What if the software that's driving the car doesn't know all the current local laws? Then human beings are following one set of laws and the car is following software that doesn't match the rules provided. Okay. What if somebody wanted to use a 3D printer to print a helmet? You can do that, but it wouldn't be too smart because the helmet wouldn't be very protected. Uh, other things like in privacy, uh, implanting computer chips, um, inside of a person so you can track them, right, rather than you lost your wallet, you lost your money. If there was a computer chip inside your finger, you could just pay with your finger. But now you can track everything about that person, where they are, or, you know. Uh, so there's privacy-related issues. Um, and then the other thing is medical records. So this is actually, a long time ago, a friend of mine was a medical doctor. We were going to create a... Uh, kicking around the idea of creating a website that tracks everyone's medical issues. Someone gets into a car accident, gets brought into a hospital, they're not in their hometown, the doctor has no idea who they are. It'd be nice if they could just log in and find out everything uh, medically about the person. That would be great for the doctor. The downside is you'd have this database full of everyone's medical information, and a lot of that is private information they don't want going outside of their own personal stuff. So there, yeah, so, there's a lot of ethical issues related to technology. Um, then there's also here property rights. Um, I don't 
not this is the greatest example, but mining in outer space. If you go to the moon and you start digging for oil, let's say, who, who owns this oil? You know? So it's, is it the, the, the uh, country that has the best technology that can fly the uh, spaceship to the planet? You know, do they get the oil? Who ethically should uh, own this? Electronic information, uh, for example, you can block, uh, I mean, this, this is almost an antiquated example, but you can block um, IP addresses, computer sites that you're going through, phone numbers you're going through, um, if you want to, and decide, you know, who decides what, what should be blocked and what should not be blocked. Might not be based on law, but it might be based on ethics, the ethics of the company you work for. Uh, okay, so. Computer uh, abuse, you can have act hacktivism. We talked about that when we were talking about uh, cybersecurity. Um, hacktivism is where people uh, use computers to get across their political point of view. And it's one thing to say, you know, here's my political view. It's another thing to say, this political group should attack that political group at 2 o'clock next Sunday. Um, that could become a very unethical behavior. Okay. Um, okay, so technology can be used to support ethical conduct. For example, there are a lot of these GoFundMe pages when people, when a disaster happens, if people need help. Um, so technology can be used for fundraising and stuff like that. Um, and tools can be used to organize people in a crisis, like the coronavirus. Uh, people need to get medicine and that type of so websites and Facebook can uh, be used to locate friends uh, after a disaster. So a lot of good things about technology that can be, um, that technology is good for, very ethical use for it, also a very unethical use for it, oh sorry, uh, also a very unethical use for computers. Um, and the main thing uh, I guess to come across is Computers are moving at a much faster pace than lawmakers and politicians can get together and write laws preventing you from doing something that's illegal. So since ethics really talks about uh, a set of guidelines, a right and wrong set of guidelines for us to follow that aren't really written into law and there is no current penalty if you don't follow it it is important for us to be ethical when using computers and going on the internet and uh, that type of behavior.